This is Jack, and he is my personal most controversial antagonist in One Piece. With Jack, it's almost like Echiro Oda was running an experiment to see how well he could set up a character, and then just how efficiently he could waste every drop of potential from said setup. Jack is, he's so conflicting. There is so much about him that is so frustratingly good. And it's all in service of the, well, you'll find out. Because we are on a mission to rank every major antagonist in the most comprehensive and exhaustive way possible, video Video by video, this time featuring the disaster that is Jack the Drought. Jack was the main antagonist of the Zoark, where he was sent to the Phantom Island to recover Rizo. Jack is one of Kaido's all stars with an ancient Zoan devil fruit that allows him to transform into a big bulky mammoth, meaning that yes, he was an elephant sent to an elephant during the elephant arc. And Jack, mate, he was a big deal because his job was to portray the threat of an emperor of the sea, which was a concept that we were only just starting to explore at the time. So Jack needed to stroll in and make every villain before him look utterly insignificant. And he did a bit too good of a job of that. Onzo, we met Jack the Drought, a man so devastating that nothing less than a natural disaster can accurately describe him. Everywhere he goes is left barren, decrepit, and destroyed, and he was worth a mind-boggling one billion berries. Jack was the first character in the series to have a bounty in the billion range. And whilst it looks almost quaint compared to modern standards, this was unfathomable at the time. Before Jack Jack, the highest known bounties in the series sat at around the 500 million range, being Luffy post Dress Rosa, and then we also had Ace at 550 million. This right here was the known bounty ceiling. And back in that day, people were speculating that only someone like Roger could have possibly made it to the billion berry mark. But then cut to Zoe and installs this random elephant dude who isn't even the captain of his own crew, and he destroys the bounty ceiling by doubling the highest known amounts. It made it very clear to us that even after beating Doflamingo, Mingo Luffy had such a long way to go. Because again, this wasn't even the emperor in question that we need to defeat. This was a minion of the emperor. And Jack's first full panel introduction at the end of chapter 807 exudes this power fantastically. What we're seeing here is Oda's classic dramatic shading. Whenever he really wants to make an impact, he switches to this hyper-realistic shading style. I mean, hyper-realistic compared to the traditional One Piece style. And it's almost as if the character is transcending the generally flat and vibrant world of One Piece and making a threatening incursion into reality. Also, very small note about this panel because I will never have an opportunity to talk about it anywhere else. In this panel, one of the minks standing in front of Jack has a shirt with Milky on the back. She's the mink who Chopper is just a little bit head over hooves for, and it appears that amongst the mink tribe, she even has her own merch. Shortly after, there's also another mink named Monji who makes the mistake of trying to reason with Jack. He says, we would never wish for battle, but we will not find a solution to the issue if you do not listen. Jack, you said your name was, there will be no lies from us. After which point, Jack destroys a building and states, have we come to bargain, Jin Rummy? No, Master Jack. We came to seize a samurai. And really, that should have been expected because you cannot bargain with a natural disaster. What Monji did there was like walking up to a tornado and saying, now you listen here, Mr. Tornado. We're not going to achieve anything by just being a narrow, violently rotating column of air and then being surprised when the tornado goes and destroys his monkey house. Despite this, Monji tries to reason with Jack one last time, imploring him to speak with Duke Inuarashi, to which Jack replies, speak? No. And I love this because the word speak, it is so offensive to Jack. Just suggesting that Jack engage in a non-violent act is a legitimate trigger for him, which you can see by the strained and cracked mammoth eyes. He, he's not happy. And Jack has a pretty horrifyingly intriguing way of conducting business because this is his proposal to the mink tribe. Let me say this. If the samurai is here, we stop attacking. If he's not, it's a crime. Which is essentially saying, if you're guilty, you're innocent. And if you're innocent, you're guilty. Either way, it doesn't matter. Jack gets what he wants. He either accomplishes his mission or he gets to feel the rush of destruction. Ideally both. Which results in this mind boggled expression from Inuarashi, a dog man who realizes that he's come into conflict with a true beast. And something that really helps with this impression is that Oda introduced Jack in his full Zoan form. And it actually takes three chapters before we meet Jack in his base form, which is really cool because keeping him in this prolonged animal state helps us to get to know the real Jack. It reduces 
the risk of humanizing him in any way, because the mammoth form is much more true to who he is on the inside. Although I should say the very first time we see anything of Jack is in chapter 801, where we are treated to a close up of his eye, which is like looking into the killing instinct of a wild creature. And I imagine that you're all probably very familiar with this eye, because in total across Zoe, there are 16 close ups of Jack's single eye. Now to put that into some perspective, not counting these eye close ups, there are a total of 19 panels of Jack in his human form and 20 panels of Jack in his mammoth form across Zo. So almost a third of every panel featuring Jack is that close up of his eye. That is an insane ratio. And he only spends one third of his time in this arc depicted with any sort of humanity. So when reading Zo, it is very clear that he is meant to be portrayed as a true beast of this world. And that inhuman nature was very evident in Jack's raw power. He fought the mink leaders, Inu Arashi and Nekomamushi for five days straight. And they took turns with Jack. Inu Arashi fought him by day and Nekomamushi fought him by night. Jack wasn't allowed a single moment to rest for the whole five days and he still fought the entire tribe to a standstill because it wasn't just Inorashi and Nekomamushi. He absolutely took on the whole tribe, which is made clear in my favorite quote about Jack. We were unable to stop Jack's reinforcements from continually arriving by sea. They were like an unstoppable zombie army, but over time, we steadily and surely overcame the enemy. If anything, there was just one place we couldn't break them down and that was Jack, for he is truly a monster. Which gets even worse when you realize that Jack could have ended this fight at any time thanks to the poisonous gas, but he chose to engage in this prolonged destruction. He chose to keep stacking up losses on both sides. There was no logic to it and why would there be? He's a natural disaster, he doesn't operate on logic. So Jack is a rare example of an antagonist that I will forego one of my usual criteria for, which is having an understandable motivation. Because throughout his run in One Piece, Jack has never been a character that I could even begin to understand what makes him tick and why. But that is the whole point of his natural disaster theme. Again, you don't ask the tornado why it's doing the thing it's doing. It's just nature. And there's a very poetic nature to Jack's defeat via the trunk of Zunesha. So most people are satisfied by the irony of Jack being defeated by a bigger version of himself. Big elephant defeats small elephant who we thought was big elephant, but not compared to the really big elephant. But it is so much deeper than that. Jack is a personified natural disaster who was beaten by Zunesha, a personified island. Personified or uh, zoomorphized, I guess. I don't really care which. What I care about is that Jack's defeat was so satisfying to me because this conflict was bigger than individuals. It was a battle of nature and the land, as it always does, endured against the natural disaster. I really don't think that Oda has ever done a better job of setting up a villain. Even when compared to some of the greatest antagonist introductions like Kaido falling from the sky and Kizaru versus the worst generation on Sabadee, to me, neither of them hits as hard as this story of Jack and his relentless and unstoppable brutality. If I was judging Jack based on Zoe and Zoe alone, he'd be a solid 10 out of 10 for me. A strongly compelling, well-written, raise the stakes antagonist who had a perfect ending. However, this was far from the end of Jack and what followed is, in my opinion, one of the biggest character fumbles in One Piece. Because Zoe is a small part of a bigger picture and Jack was a building block for the Wano arc. And one of the really unfortunate things about wrapping up his idea so well on Zoe is that it didn't leave him any room to develop on Wano, as if we would have had time to explore him anyway. But Wano was the arc where we needed to take him down for good. So a big problem that emerged with Jack is that Oda, you know, he was already done with the idea. And this is apparent right from his reintroduction. Jack is reintroduced to us and on the very next page, he is being manhandled by Ashura Doji. As an introduction to the samurai of Wano, this works really well. To see that there are random people on this island who can fight at the billion berry level, but it does a huge disservice to Jack as it immediately ruins the image of him that was built up on Zo. Because the unstoppable natural disaster all of a sudden it was stopped by an obese drunk riding a bull. And this is only the beginning of the complete and utter dismantling of everything that is Jack. Kaido then interrupts the fight because he wants to speak with Ashura Doji, which is kind of like having your dad step into a primary school fight. I mean, yeah, the kid you are up against, he's gonna lose, but everyone's gonna make fun of poor, poor Jack because he needed daddy to help him. And the next time we see Jack, he's being scolded by King and Queen, who in this family metaphor would be his two older brothers. King calls Jack pathetic and they say they don't need any more dead weight. Queen even calls him Jack the Stooge. And to all of this, how does Jack respond? Well, he submits. He apologizes to King and Queen. And it's like, who even is this guy? A hundred chapters ago, Jack would have raised an entire country at the mere suggestion of needing to speak to someone let alone 
one having someone speak to him like this. And now he, what we're seeing here, it's not a natural disaster anymore. It's just a plain disaster. And I should say that this does actually fit quite well with Jack's age. He looks a lot older due to, you know, general bigliness, but Jack is only 28 years old. Meanwhile, King is in his late forties, whilst Queen and Kaido are both in their fifties. Kaido's even pushing 60. So Jack is genuinely the child of the group. And in fact, he was only eight years old when Kaido commandeered Wano. But even 20 years later, it seems that when we're on Wano, Jack still feels like he's eight years old. And after he loses a rematch against Inuarashi and Nekomamushi on Onigashima, Kaido even has to do the classic dad thing of consoling Jack by saying, no, my precious little elephant cake, this does not make you weak. They're just that strong. Everything we see of Jack on Wano is a complete reversal of what happened on Zo, and not in a clever narrative flip kind of way. Because breaking the facade of your characters, yes, that can work, but only if they go on to evolve and become something new. Like it did with Katakuri, portraying him as the perfect being and then slowly having him come to terms with imperfection in a very cathartic struggle. That's not even close to what happens with Jack. And something that I love is that around the time Jack is defeated by the Mink leaders, we had chapter 989, which is titled, I Can't Imagine Losing. And when I first saw that title, I was like, mate, losing is the only thing Jack can imagine. Because one of the biggest disservices that Oda did to this character was never giving him even a single victory. Jack couldn't beat the Minx without the poison gas on Zo. He was defeated by Doflamingo's Marine escort team. He was beaten by Zunesha. His fight with Ashura Doji wasn't going very well before Daddy interrupted. The Sulong Minx annihilated him, and Jack's final fight saw him defeated by Inuarashi alone. To be fair, in that last case, it has about as good of a conclusion as it could have. In the end, the final attack Inuarashi used against Jack was a canine cleaver using his prosthetic sword leg, so he beat Jack with the very limb that Jack removed from him on Zo. But as it turns out, the unstoppable Jack is quite easily and frequently stopped. In fact, in One Piece history, he's never not been stopped. He failed all of his missions, lost all of his fights, and I usually don't like boiling characters down to a simple win-loss ratio, but it's really hard to avoid when that is Jack's character. There really is nothing deeper going on here than battle, and he's not even very good at that. And that becomes problematic for me, because all of the praise I gave to his unneeded motivational aspects earlier, all of that very much disappears when you remove that natural disaster idea. During Wano, Jack is no longer the personification of a force of nature, and that makes me want a lot more depth from the character, depth which never arrives. The best we get is that the Wano art coincided with the release of the One Piece Vivia Card data book, which gave us, a, gave us a lot of weird information about certain characters. And one thing it revealed about Jack is that his hobby is lawn mowing. And this could not be more appropriate to demonstrate his current status. Jack used to be a natural disaster, a man who would wipe the earth clean of all life. But in his current state, the best he can do is hop on a lawnmower and cut some grass on a Sunday morning before returning to his nine to five at Kaido Corp on Monday, where he's constantly being berated by the middle management of King and Queen. But here's the most telling thing about Jack on Wano. There isn't a single situation where Oda uses the trademark Jack single eye close up in this whole arc. Remember that Oda used this device a whopping 16 times on Zo, and Zo was only 23 chapters long. So that is a very high percentage of Jack eyeball happening here, whereas Wano is 149 chapters long, and not once do we see the signature artistic device that Jack is known for. And I don't think Oda just forgot, he definitely did this on purpose. And that's because Jack, he didn't deserve these close-ups, because the fearsome beast of Zo is not present on Wano. Zo Jack and Wano Jack are two completely different characters. And being the most generous I can would be to say that Jack was sacrificed to build up King, Queen, and Kaido. The idea that the unstoppable monster we met on Zo was basically the pet of the true monsters that we now have to face on Wano. And I do appreciate that idea, but it doesn't change much about Jack himself, which is a problem because this video is about Jack. I mean, sure, there could be a purpose to cutting off his narrative balls, but that doesn't make him not a narrative eunuch. So I do think that King was very correct in his assessment of Jack being dead weight, because narratively, Jack is dead weight in the Wano arc. Oda implemented the idea of Jack brilliantly on Zo, and I personally believe that's where the concept of Jack should have been laid to rest. Get rid of him being a fishman and just have him drown after being attacked by Zunesha. Now, speaking of Jack, he's a fishman. The reason why I haven't mentioned it until now is because it never really became relevant, which is a shame because again, it was such a cool idea. Other than Vanderdecken, Jack is the only fishman devil fruit user we've encountered to date. And I do feel like that whole angle was a bit wasted. I would have loved to find out how a fishman became a member of the Beast Pirates. And I do feel quite strongly about not having Jack be a part of Wano at all, you know, outside of flashbacks maybe. You 
could do what Whole Cake Island did with Charlotte Snack. He was a sweet commander who was beaten before the arc even started. So he was pushed into the background in the manga, I think we see him like once, and didn't take an active part. So what we do is the same thing with Jack, by acknowledging his death on Zoe, and maybe even using his open all-star spot as some motivation for the Toby Ropo to work towards promotion. It may have even removed a very small part of what made Wano feel so, so bloated, because I really don't think that we lose much, if anything, by removing Jack from the arc. And it may even enhance his legacy. If he wasn't in Wano at all, then he'd have this reputation of, well, just imagine if Jack had been on Onigashima. Then the Alliance would have been in trouble because that guy, he was unstoppable. He needed an entire island to take him down. And overall, I think it's a real shame that Jack went down this path. Like I said, if I was only ranking him based on Zo, then Jack would be up there with the very best of the series. But as time went on and his role dragged out, it became apparent that I don't think anyone is more deserving of the title of fraud than Jack. So in the end, I can't bring myself to give Jack anything higher than a C tier. And he should thank me for that. And the only reason he's that high is purely because of Zo. He had so much potential, more so than at least half the villains that we're going to be talking about, but it was all in service of what ultimately became very little. And Jack's legacy in One Piece is now more of a meme than an actual character. But you let me know in the comments, which major antagonist would you like to rank next?